How do you deal with being so unpopular in what you do for a living? I could sort of joke about that and say that being a science nerd prepared me for unpopularity. <laughs> <laughs> the way I deal with being unpopular as a comparative effectiveness researcher, um, I think a lot of that comes with some of my background. I have worked through being a sci total science nerd and you know, we're never the most popular people in the class. It, growing up, it doesn't pay to be smart. It pays to be athletic and pretty and a cheerleader. <laughs> and taking every science class that your school offers is never a way to garner popularity. <laughs> um, on the other hand, aside from joking aside, um, I really have a lot of passion for what I do. Um, I feel that the services that myself and other researchers in my field offer can really, can really help save lives. One of the things that we found is um, in our studies with Vioxx, we found that it causes cardiac events and heart attacks at a much higher rate than other um, painkillers. And we found this out several years in advance of when um, the national media was picking it up and when, it, when the FDA finally pulled the drug off the market. And so I don't think I'm going out on a limb when I say that I, I feel that my work saves lives. And um, I don't want to be paternalistic and say that I'm, I'm making decisions on behalf of people. I, I try to empower people to make decisions, but I do think that a lot of what we do is um, provide people with the tools to make the correct decisions that are best for them. One of the, one of the real challenges, in the, at least in the U.S. healthcare setting, is that drugs are only ever compared to a placebo, and new medical interventions are usually only compared to placebo, and there's never these head-to-head -head trials. So when um, a new drug comes out, you don't know if it's any better than the former drug, you just know that it's better than nothing. And so we're really giving patients and providers the tools that they need to understand if you should move from drug A to drug B. There's constant innovation happening and we're not trying to stifle that, we're just trying to make sure that the right technologies and innovations go to the right population. And one of the, one of the other um, challenges that we face that really helps sort of keep me going and understanding this is that in clinical trials, it's a lot of white males who are enrolled and there's a, there's a severe deficiency of sort of marginalized, poor and ethnic populations. And it's something that the NIH has picked up on and has really tried to increase enrollment. So a lot of times we have this idea of efficacy versus um, actual impact. So in a clinical trial, something might work very well, but then when you get to the real world setting, someone may not have a good prescription drug benefit, so they're splitting pills, or they're only taking one every other day, or they're choosing which of their drugs to buy. So um, we try to incorporate a lot, of those, a lot of those aspects into the research we do, where we say, in an ideal setting, this drug may work, but in a real life setting, it may not work for you because of the particular situation that you're in. So I like to think that I'm taking the research and giving it to some of the more vulnerable populations who can really use this information.